Could it be that protein is a secret ingredient to better weight loss, better metabolic health, and better body composition and strength? Well, it's possible, and you've probably heard a lot from us here at Diet Doctor about the importance of protein intake. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to talk about three different studies that kind of can help highlight some of the benefits, the potential drawbacks, and maybe mitigate some concerns about protein. It's a little bit of a roller coaster here with so many different studies about protein, but the first one I want to talk about is a pretty large meta-analysis published in atherosclerosis. And what they did was they looked at 54 different randomized controlled trials, including over 4,300 individuals. And they, they collated the data from all of these studies to see does a higher protein diet provide better weight loss, body composition, blood sugar, insulin control compared to a lower protein diet? And on average of all these 54 studies, ranged from four weeks to 156 weeks in duration. The high protein diet, which on average was 28% protein, 41% carbs, and 31% fat compared to the lower protein, which was on average 18% protein, 54% carbs and 28% fat. So right away, the higher protein was lower carb at 41%, but by no means low carb at 41%. Now there was an overall difference with the benefits to higher protein for weight loss, albeit small, 0.64 kilogram average weight loss benefit compared to the lower protein. But interestingly, almost all of that was fat mass. So 0.55 kilograms of that 0.64 additional weight loss was all fat mass. So it speaks to protein being important for body composition. There was also a small decrease in systolic blood pressure, one millimeter of mercury, so nothing dramatic there, and a slight reduction in triglycerides and lower insulin levels, although no significantly lowering of the blood sugar. Now, a couple things are interesting here. One, lower insulin levels, because protein does have a bit of an, it does trigger insulin to a degree, but by lowering the carbs a little and raising the protein, they actually lowered the insulin in all of these trials. Now, any meta-analysis like this, you're, you're incorporating 54 different trials for this one, right? So they're gonna have different inclusion criteria, different lengths, different interventions. So it's, there's quite a bit of heterogeneity when you compare all these trials. But what's interesting is there is clearly something to increase in the protein, which we've said time and time again. But is just increasing protein enough? Or do we need more than that, such as some resistance training to get maximum benefit? Well, another interesting study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition took 208 subjects who were older than 65 years old and randomized them to five different groups, okay? So there was either a carbohydrate supplement, a whey protein supplement, a collagen protein supplement, or light intensity exercise plus the whey supplement. And finally, the fifth group, high resistance training exercise plus the whey supplement. So the hypothesis was that whey supplementation was gonna improve muscle mass and strength more than collagen or carbohydrate supplementation. And the resistance training was gonna add even more. That was the hypothesis. But what they found interestingly was among the three supplementation groups with no exercise, there was no difference in muscle mass as they measured it or strength. So for this uh, older group with no resistance training, simply having whey supplementation compared to collagen and carbohydrate supp supplementation did not benefit strength. Interestingly, I wonder if it would have been different from whole foods rather than supplementation, but they didn't measure that. So that remains un unanswered. But for the group that did do uh, heavy resistance training plus whey supplementation, they had the biggest benefit for um, muscle mass and for strength. Now, unfortunately, there wasn't a control that did heavy resistance without the protein supplement because that would have been an interesting comparison too. So the, the conclusion of this study was that protein by itself is not enough to improve strength and muscle mass that you need resistance training. Now, I think we can all agree protein plus resistance training is going to be the biggest benefit. Uh, because you're stimulating your muscles to grow and get bigger, and you're giving them the substrate to do that. But could higher protein still improve muscle strength? Well, there are plenty of observational studies that show that that, that association is true. 
and there even are some randomized studies, but they're not universal. So I think part of it is, as with anything, you have to say, well, what's different about the studies and why do some show benefits and others not? May have to do with the food source, the protein source, supplement versus real food. What else are they doing with their diet? What else are they doing with their lifestyle, which wasn't um, as well explored in this most recent study? So, so my take home from this is that, um, yes, protein supplementation is important and it is best when combined with some form of resistance training. But now what about potential drawbacks to higher protein. Driven mostly by an observational trial by by Walter Longo and his colleagues, there's some concern that at a younger age, higher protein levels are going to increase IGF-1, which could be associated with an increased rate of cancer. Now, to be clear, there is no clear evidence that increased protein increases cancer. But through this uh, surrogate marker of IGF-1, This one observational study brought up a concern, and the same was not seen in the elderly group above 65, only in the group that was younger. But there's a prior study that I thought was so interesting, published in the journal Metabolism. And it was small, they had 33 subjects that were young, they were all in their 20s and relatively healthy, and they randomized them to three groups, either the RDA of protein, 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, twice that amount, 1.6 grams per kilogram per day, or three times that amount at 2.4 grams per kilogram per day. But what they did was they also had this in the context of a 30% energy reduced diet. So it was a purposeful weight loss energy reduction diet. And they followed the levels of IGF-1 and testosterone. And what they found was on all of these diets, whether it was the 0.8, the 1.6, or the 2.4 grams per kilo, the I, the IGF-1 went down, as did the testosterone with the energy deficit over the 30 days. So they, they sort of concluded that the increased protein doesn't help mitigate the reduction in IGF-1 and testosterone, but the other conclusion is the higher protein doesn't cause an increased IGF-1 either. So why am I going through all this? Well, because, again, the context matters. If you're eating a purposely energy restricted diet, or if by increasing your protein, you reduce your caloric intake, which plenty of studies show, then it appears the effect of IGF-1, at least by this study, may not be as big of a concern. So it, it takes it into the context of when we're looking at these observational trials, what else is going on? Are they overeating calories? What is the quality of their food? What is their exercise and the rest of their lifestyle? So in a roundabout way, trying to use all three of these studies and sort of triangulate them together, if you are eating higher protein and it is improving your health in other ways with weight loss, body composition, insulin, blood pressure, metabolic health, and you're naturally restricting your calories or reducing your calories because of the higher protein satiety, and on top of that, you're doing some form of resistance training. To me, that seems like it has the best evidence to say the benefit to risk ratio is greatest when you're increasing the protein in that way. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but what I wanted to do in this video was go through the things you need to think about when am I getting enough protein and what does that mean? Am I having some form of resistance training? And again, that doesn't have to mean going to the gym and pumping, pumping iron. It could be bands, it can be body weight exercises, whatever, but it means stimulating your muscles in some way, moving your body in some way. And what's going on with the rest of my diet? Am I in caloric excess? Am I weight stable? Uh, Or am I trying to lose weight? And what's going on with the rest of my metabolic health? Those are the nuances and the details we need to know when we try and answer the question for me, myself, or if you're a physician or clinician or you know, a dietitian trying to say for my client, is higher protein going to be beneficial? We need to know all those details uh, about their lifestyle. So I hope this was helpful. Um, If it was, please click the thumbs up and the subscribe down below. And you're always welcome to leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And stay tuned for more updates from us here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.